Hi everyone, this is Dr. Manu Krishnan Ki and today we will be discussing about the anatomy of limbic system. The word limbus means a ring and the limbic system is a set of cortical and subcortical structures that forms a ring around the upper end of the brainstem. And the term limbic lobe was coined by Broca in the year 1878. It was formerly called as rhinencephalon because its association with the olfactory. So it is having some uh, association with the olfactory process. That's why it has got the name rhinencephalon. And it plays a vital role in elaboration of the emotional behavior drive and the memory. And to be specific, the recent memory. And it is also known as the visceral brain or the emotional brain. Structurally, the limbic system consists of two components, that is the cortical components and the subcortical components. In the cortical components, that is again divided into the limbic lobe components and the hippocampal formation. So, in the limbic lobe components, it includes the cingulate gyrus, isthmus, the parahippocampal gyrus and the ungus respectively while hippocampal formation includes the hippocampus, the dentate gyrus, the gyrus fasciolaris, inducium grisium. So these are the terms that you should remember regarding the components, the cortical components of limbic system. Then in the subcortical components, it includes the amygdaloid nuclear complex, the septal region, the olfactory area, hypothalamus, especially the mammillary body region, and the anterior nucleus of the thalamus. So here you can see all the components in total. So here you have the cingulate gyrus, which you already know that it is the gyrus that extends between the callosal sulcus and the cingulate sulcus. So this is the yellow colored part represents the cingulate gyrus. Then you have the inducium grisium, which is immediately beneath the cingulate gyrus. Then you have the paraterminal gyrus. Here is the paraterminal gyrus, which is a part of the septal area. So we have mentioned about septal area. So the paraterminal gyrus is a part of that. Then you have the amygdaloid body here. It is otherwise known as the amygdaloid nuclear complex or the amygdala. Then we have the parahippocampal gyrus. Then we have the hippocampus here. Then the dentate gyrus, which has got the name by its tooth appearance that we will be discussing shortly. Then we have the gyrus fasciolaris, which is over here. So these are the components of the limbic system, which you have to remember. Then the limbic lobe components in detail. So the first component is the cingulate gyrus, which is involved in the processing of emotions and the behavioral regulation while the isthmus is the narrower part of the cingulate gyrus in the posterior part that we will be seeing in the following diagram. Then we have the posterior part of parahippocampus. It is a thin layer of grey matter seen in the posterior part of the parahippocampus and here the emotions are analyzed. While the ungus is the post anterior extremity of the parahippocampal gyrus. So let us see the same in this diagram. We have the cingulate gyrus here. But the narrower part that is the isthmus, isthmus means narrow. Then we have the posterior part of the parahippocampus and the anterior extremity of the hippocampus, parahippocampus, that is nothing but the uncus. So this includes the limbic lobe components. Then comes the hippocampal formation. The hippocampus is otherwise known as the ram's horn or ammon's horn based on its appearance and the location is an area of cerebral cortex which forms a longitudinal elevation in the floor of inferior horn of the lateral ventricle while it receives that is the afferents it receives fibers from the endorhinal area that is related to the olfactory process so you will be knowing that already so it receives fibers from the endorhinal area then we have the afferents that is the fornix is the main afferent of the hippocampus while the functions of hippocampus it is an integrative center 
which influences the endocrine and visceral functions and the emotional states and also it plays an important role in the recent memory i have told you in the previous slides that it specifically aims on the reason memory then we have the second component that is the dendrite gyrus which occupies the interval between the hippocampus and the parahippocampal gyrus we have seen in the previous diagram where the dendrite gyrus was and it has got the name because its surface is toothed in appearance so the tooth like appearance gives it the name the dendrite gyrus then the next one is the posterior end and is continuous with the gyrus fasciolaris while the indusium grisium is a vestigial gray matter and it contains two parts that is the medial and lateral longitudinal striae so these components you have to remember so here we have the diagram representing the other parts which includes the hippocampus parahippocampus gyrus then the amygdaloid body you can see the dentate gyrus here which is toothed in appearance then the gyrus fasciolaris posteriorly it continues with the gyrus fasciolaris so that defines the hippocampal formation part let's come to the subcortical structures now the first one among them is the amygdaloid nuclear complex or amygdaloid body or the amygdala these are the same names or it's a synonyms of the amygdaloid nuclear complex it is an almond shaped mass of gray matter underlying the rostral part of the parahippocampal gyrus rostral means the head region or the head part and the afferents it receives afferents from the primary olfactory area so you have to remember the the smell will have some emotions attached to that so that processing is happening through this route so it receives afferents from the primary olfactory area and it gives off afferents into the striae terminalis and the function of the amygdaloid complex or the amygdala it as it is playing an important role in controlling the somatic responses to the internal needs drives or instincts so the internal instincts are controlled by the amygdala next is the septal region or the septal area it is on the medial aspect of the frontal lobe beneath the genu and rostrum and in front of the lamina terminalis so this genu and rostrum is parts of corpus callosum that we will be discussing in the corpus callosum part so just keep in mind it lies on the medial aspect of frontal lobe beneath the genu and rostrum and in front of lamina terminalis and it includes paraterminal gyrus which we have seen in the previous picture and parolfactory gyrus its function is shown to be the pleasure zone so as per the experiments that are conducted on rats they have found like it is having a function as a pleasure zone then comes this olfactory cortex it is the primary olfactory area concerned with the appreciation of smell while the hypothalamus especially the mammillary bodies they receive the information from the hippocampus and are reciprocally connected to the anterior thalamic nucleus and the midbrain thus by playing an important role in the memory making process so it has a part in the recent memory process while the anterior nucleus of thalamus it display functions pertaining to the memory so here we can see the same uh, we will revise what all structures were there the cingulate gyrus the indusium grisium the paraterminal gyrus which is a part of the septal area then the amygdaloid body here then parahippocampal gyrus here the hippocampus here the dendrite gyrus then the gyrus fasciolaris and the mammillary bodies here and you can see a green projection here that is nothing but the olfactory bulb that you have already studied while discussing the olfactory now finally coming to the functions of the limbic system the interconnections are very complex and not fully understood yet in the case of limbic system it's still in the research 
and the emotional aspects of behavior with visceral responses accompanying these emotions are told to be the function or the important function of the limbic system and along with that it has a major role in the reason memory and it also controls mechanisms in the body which is the temperature maintenance the osmolarity of the body fluids then the drive to eat and drink etc these are the basic instincts and functions so these are the basic functions of the limbic system and it is also known as the visceral brain and emotional brain because of these all functions together and this concludes the limbic system thank you